the middle of that building with no one else there and was surprised when I heard the voice of the Lord say, I can do this in Tualatin. I looked around me at the magnitude and I thought, Lord, I can't do this. And God spoke to my heart and said, I didn't say you could do it. I said I could do it. In 1999, I was sitting at my desk in my office, minding my own business when the Lord spoke to me and said, I want to build a great high school to glorify my name. I said, God, I don't know anything about high school. And God reassured me that he knew quite a bit about me. And I said, Lord, if that's your will and that's what you want, then I'm in. In the year 2000, the leadership presented this vision to you. And you responded. You responded with faith and gifts. And the dream started to come reality. In June of 2001, 38 acres of land became available, and God gave it into our hands. All those who knew what they were talking about said it's an impossibility. You cannot build something that big. You can't build a church, a school in this area. They won't let it happen. But church, you pray, and the permits started to come. The impossibilities started to become possible. October 2002, the church permit was ours. April 2003, the rural school permit came to us. January 2004, the parks permit. May 2004, building one permit. Here we are. These are miracles. The Lord has done it. October 2006, Horizon Christian High School was born. journey, your main purpose, about me, and not about the world, not even about your family, about me, God says, and I'll bless your family, and I'll bring them forth to be great and mighty things. And what a blessing it is for me to be here with you guys today. That video is about 10 years old. You can tell it with the hairstyles in those high schoolers, didn't you? But it's been so fun. I, that brought me to tears back there to see what's happened and to, to see you sitting here today. Uh, there was a time when this was just cement, and for a few years we couldn't get the funds to go. And, and the, Lord, the Lord's my witness. My wife and I prayed at least 300 times on this campus before it came into existence. And I, we, we, we built this floor here to show that we had a permit so donors could give, but still for a few years we couldn't get it rolling. And this was all cement, we had a stage up here that was cement, and I would stand on the stage with just a cement floor out there. I'd lift my hands to the air and say, God, unless you do it, it can't happen. It's too big of a dream, it's too wild, it's too crazy. They've asked me to tell the story today, and I want to do that. But before, before I really get into it, I want to give away some tickets. I don't know if you know, has it been announced here about the Woodlawn movie and what we're 
trying to do, okay, I, so, so I saw a movie with a few hundred pastors called Woodlawn, and it's a, it's a football story that's incredible. It's the best Christian movie I've ever seen. And there was one recently that I saw that was number one in the nation, a war room. I think this is made much better. And the actors are incredible. Sean Astin, who is the one from the Lord of the, Ring, Lord of the Rings, and Rudy is starring in the movie. And, and so I had this idea, and Coach, Coach was in it with me. He actually emailed me when I was thinking about it, Coach Craze, and said, well, could we see this movie together? So we, here's what we do. We rented out a theater at Bridgeport that seats 207 people. And uh, we're asking our football team to come in and sit down front, wear their jerseys, and we're gonna watch this movie and we're inviting people from the church, people from the school, and we're hoping to just fill that theater on a Wednesday night, the 21st, I believe, and, and, and I want you to come. I want as many students to be there as we can. And at the end of the movie, we're gonna gather around that team and pray. Uh, Pastor Roger and I, the credits will probably roll because they're not going to shut everything down so we can have church at the theater, you know. But as the, as the credits are rolling, we're, we're going we're gonna to get you guys in a circle and we're going to pray out loud. Pastor Roger and I, see how loud we can pray so everybody can hear us and bless you. But I know that the, the volleyball team is doing great things this year. I'm hearing amazing things about you. I'm going to try to get to a game. The soccer team for the girls, I think you guys are just doing some wonderful things. I'm so so proud of you. I have to admit it. I love sports. Okay. I, I just, I just do. You are my hobby now. I follow you on, uh, you know, online and, and watch like crazy to see what's happening. And uh, so I do enjoy sports, but I'm hoping you're there. So I have five tickets to give away. These are, these are $11 tickets. We're selling them for 10. I think Roger has them if you don't have them, but I'm going to give them away only if you can answer trivia questions. All right. So if you get a trivia question and you say, I don't want to go to that movie, hey, you can sell this, but you have to sell it for face value, okay? For you uh, entrepreneurs out there, no $20 tickets when, when they run out, all right? So here's the first trivia question. What, I, I doubt if any student can get this. So this might be a staff person back there, but staff, give the students a chance first, okay? What was the location that we started the high school in 10 years ago? Mustafa. It's another church, but you got to know the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? No, it wasn't Grace. Someone else had a hand here. It is a church. I thought, what? Go ahead, yes. The Wesleyan Church in Wilsonville. Come get your ticket. You have to come get it. It was a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We did. We we were ready to start school. Hung out of the gate with 65 students, which is a great start for the first year. But we 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 weren't ready here. They wouldn't give us permits, so we had to scramble and get a church where we worked out of Wilsonville. And it was a bit of a mess because we let you guys go for lunch and you'd go over to the mall, and we couldn't get some of them back. You know, after we after we did that. So who was our very first principal? Quick. Say it. Right here. George Grace, that's right. Five years, Coach Grace. Name, I want you to just blurt it out really quick, okay? And I need to, I need, I need someone to help me. I guess you can't you can't see, but I'll do my best. Just don't feel bad if you were first and go out bitter and I missed it, okay? But we are just have fun here. Name one player from the very first state basketball championship team. Josh, heard it right here. All right, Josh Platt, who's here? Where's Josh? Right there, buddy, okay. <laughs> um, tell me the name of our very first full drama presentation and the location. Oh, good on the roof, where was it? She, she got the location. Did you know what the, the thing was? Okay, come here. She got it. She got it. She, good job, though. He knew Fiddler on the Roof, and it was it was formerly Woodhaven. Now it's a Horizon Community Church site in Sherwood. And catch this. I think it was it was either 600 and, or 750 people that showed up to watch it the first time. I couldn't believe that in a, in a small school. Okay. Does anyone know how we came to choose the Hawks as our mascot? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. Come here, Mustafa. You you left out Coach Grace though. Uh, there were, there were a couple things going on. So we couldn't believe that the environmentalists didn't hassle us because we cut down a bunch of trees here to put this here. We tried to keep everything low key so we didn't let everybody know. And the day we cut down the trees, we're, we're, we're out here on this dirt and riding around in Rogers four wheel drive and we look up and there's like 10 hawks in the sky because they don't have any more trees to be in, I think was the, was the deal. So they don't feel bad. They, don't, they went over to that 36 acres next door, I hope. Uh, but, but there were two things. Uh, that, that was one of them, and, and, and Coach Crace really liked it, and I said, man, I need it to be spiritual. And then about two weeks later, because that's not quite spiritual enough, you know, Horizon Hawks, it sounds great, but in Job it says, does not the hawk rise from the south with wisdom? So here we are on the south side of the port doing education with wisdom. When I heard that, I said, okay, we'll go with hawks then. Like, that's, that's spiritual enough. Name one of the players off the, do I have any more tickets, was that five? That was five. Oh, well, you, you want to hear these next two anyway? Yeah. I had to give excellence in case you didn't know. How old was Tucker Olson the year we started the school? What grade? Five. Kindergarten. 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 Yeah. Thank you, Tucker, for the nice uh, intro there. Name one player off the girls' softball team that went to the state championship. They didn't win it. Who? Liz Karen. So a student, Maggie, Anna Dempster. Okay, you guys, you guys remember. Oh well, that's kind of fun. Let me tell you a couple of stories before I get into. Uh, here's how we got our colors: purple and gold. Um, Coach Grace was a principal, remember, and and but he, he started to work a year and a half early because it takes time to ramp up to a high school, right? So he had an office here for a year and a half, and he came to me about six months out and said. We have a full sports schedule. We're starting in a few months. <clears throat> we don't have uh, we have a mascot, but we don't have colors. So we don't we don't have any students to poll. What what should we do? And I said, well, purple's always been my favorite color. And he said, and I like gold. I said, well, let's just go with purple and gold. And that's how we got purple and gold. Seriously, I'm sorry about that, but I do. I never thought about the Lakers. Never thought about you, Dub, at all. So I've heard about that since. But but um, that's how we got that. Did you know? That, that the basketball team broke an Oregon record. I, little, very few know this, and it didn't come out in the paper, but we researched it. No boys basketball team at any level in the history of Oregon have ever played in six straight basketball championships until Horizon. So that, this is the only school that ever played in six straight championship games in one we won three of those, all right? And we won a track state championship and a baseball state championship, just a bunch of stuff that's uh, that's happened. Had great success with students in business and speech and art. It's been incredible what the Lord has done uh, with this school. And, and you know, we had a sense of it early on, but it's amazing to see it happen. Let's pray, and then I'm gonna get into the story. Father, thank you for these students. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that when you speak something, if we follow, it comes into existence. And I pray, Lord, that you'd not only show these students what happened when we were willing to dream the dream you gave us, but, Lord, that they would know that the dreams you're giving them can take place, too, if they follow you and have faith. Speak to our hearts today, in Jesus' name. Amen. We named this place Horizon because Horizon means the definition is where heaven meets earth. And the idea is we wanted a place where God could touch students, touch people in a church. And there's a scripture in Hebrews 11 one that says this, faith is the confidence that we hope, the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. That's what faith is. About 16 or 17 years ago, I was sitting at my desk and I heard a a voice, and I, I recognize it then as the voice of the Lord, but in retrospect, you know much more, right? You can confirm that. I, I can confirm it. And, and the voice of the Lord said to me, I want to build a great high school to glorify my name. Now, let me tell you something. I, I didn't want to do a high school. I get credit for, you know, so, so much of this. I guess, I guess I was 
in it for the long haul for the thing that God had called us to. Uh, but it wasn't really on my mind to build a high school. So when the Lord spoke that to me, sitting at my desk, <clears throat> I said, Lord, I don't know anything about high school. And I felt him speak back to me softly and say, I know a little bit about it. And I said, well, God, if, if it's you and, and, and that's really you and you want to do this, then, then make a way because I don't even know how. We don't have the space. We don't have the land. You're going to have to help. A few weeks later, a fellow called me. <clears throat> And said, uh, I'd like to make a donation to the church and the school of $600,000. But before I do it, <clears throat> I want to know what you would do with the money. And I said, uh, why, don't, why don't you give me a week or two? I'll talk to the elders of the church. We'll pray and we'll get back to you. Well, I went to the elders. We had talked a little bit about what I felt the Lord had laid on my heart. <clears throat> Pam Priest, the elementary principal, had already spoken. She believed we should have a high school, so she was on it before I was, before the Lord spoke to me. And others had said, why don't we? But it just, you know, when it's something that big, you want to hear from God, right? And and we believe we did. So <clears throat> I went back to the guy and said, we, we would look for new land, and we would relocate the church, and we'd build a high school that could be a large high school in time. And he said, okay, I'm going to give it. So I remember uh, one of the things that was kind of fun for our family is I was praying with my son about it one night, a few weeks later. I said, Aaron, some guys, he, he was like five at the time. I said, uh, uh, maybe, maybe a little older. And, and, and I said, buddy, there's some guys going to give $600,000, but we need millions more. Would you pray with me? Because I'd go to his room and we'd pray every night before he went to sleep. And he said, yeah. So he prayed a prayer, Lord, help us. We need lots of money. And <clears throat> my wife came in and actually interrupted the the prayer time right at the end and said, hey, you have a call. So it was this fellow. So I got on the phone. He said, you know, I've been thinking about it, praying, and I want to change that $600,000 gift to a million-dollar gift. My wife and I feel that the Lord's talking to us about that. So I said, that is awesome. I hung up the phone, and I went back into my little guy's room and said, Aaron, keep praying, man. That was $400,000 that you, that you just brought into existence. Well, many people were praying. <clears throat> I remember. I need some water, guys. I remember going to um, the county planner, Washington County, so we had to drive all the way to Hillsboro. Had one of the associate pastors with me, and I walked up to the counter and asked if, um, if we got 40 acres of land, this is what I said, uh, would we, could we build a large Christian school and, and a large church on our campus? And the county planner said this. I remember his words distinctly. He said, <clears throat> um, yes, that is a possibility, but not even God or the Pope could help you do that. Because it would cost uh, it, it would cost so much money to buy land in the urban growth boundary. And he was right. $400,000 an acre probably. Excuse me. And uh, so, you know, that would have been $16 million for land. And we, okay, we can't, we can't do that. But when he said not even God or the Pope, first of all, I, I felt like saying you're half right. You know, God could help us, though. The, the, pope, the pope is a man of God, but he's not God. And, 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 but but I, here's what I said to him. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Right in that moment, we didn't have any money, any money. I said, you shouldn't have said that. Because now God's going to have to show you he's big enough. Well, years later, that same guy was the one who signed on our permit for it to happen. We went to our church. We told them we had a million dollars. It was a matching gift. So we went into a campaign and the church was running, I don't know, six or 700. It's probably twice that that big now with all of our campuses, but, but it was smaller then. And it was a challenge to think, can we raise a million dollars in our, in our church? And miraculously, after that campaign that we worked up to for about six months, the church pledged and over a three year period gave two and a half million dollars so that this thing could come into existence. I, I won't tell you a lot of stories, but I want to tell you one. Um, <clears throat> one single mother who couldn't have made, well, I know how much she made because she worked here at, at, our, at our elementary school. And it wasn't enough to do what she did. She pledged over a three year period, $18,000, a single mom, who had a student that went to George Cox in her second year 
and made under $30,000 a year, pledged $18,000. When I saw that card, I went to her and said, you don't have to do this. This is, this is too much. And she said, oh, pastor, I do have to do it. And it's not because of you, it's because God spoke to my heart and he told me to do it. And unbelievably, over three years, that single mom paid off that $18,000 in a pledge that she gave to monthly and gave when funds would come in. She paid it off, making $30,000 a year. And her, her son got all the way through George Fox in four years without paying a dime. And, and, and that kind of story, listen, people in this church sold cars and homes they sold big homes and moved to smaller homes to get that two and a half million dollars. And that two and a half million dollars put us on the move and kept us going. I remember we still didn't have land. I sat down with a, the same donor that gave a million two, two years later, I sat down with him and, and, uh, and we talked about him. I asked him for another million because we needed more to keep going. We had identified some land that we could purchase, and it was this land. And I said, we, we still need more help. And he said, can you assure me that you can build on that land? And we, there, I couldn't. And you have to be integral. You have to be honest, right? Or God doesn't bless you as you go forward. So I said to him, I, I, can't, I can't promise you we can get it done. Because we don't have a permit, and they're telling us it'll be hard. But I, I, all I can tell you is this. We believe God's called us, and we believe God's going to do it, and we'll work hard. And on that basis, even though he knew we might not be able to get it done, or I told him the truth there, he gave another number. I went to meet a fella in Salem, and there were there were 40 acres for sale here. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, when I said 38, once we, once we got our permit, as you know we did around here, uh, they, they take 20 feet on the perimeter all the way around. That's how it went to 38 and a half acres because they took two from us. The city did so they could have their set back. Anyway, I met with this guy. He said he had 40 acres. Uh, and I said, I, I'd like to have a shot at purchasing that. We had searched everywhere, you guys, for, for a year and a half. And he said, well, here's the deal. I'll sell it to you. Um, but you, you have to have a, a million dollars by this date. Can you do it? And our campaign... It's coming up to that date, and I said, I, I think we can do it. I can't promise you, but I think we can. He said, here's the deal. I'll let you put $10,000 down, and if you can't get it by that time, then we will, uh, we'll just keep you 10 grand and move on. Well, I don't know if you know much about it, but you know, when you're buying $3 million worth of land, 10,000 down is nothing. I mean, it's, it's so minuscule that he would do that. It wasn't even a believer, um, <clears throat> but God did it. God, God brought in the million, we had the cash, we, we, we were able to move, and now we had to bring it into the urban growth boundary. We had that, that, that pressure. I remember uh, bringing my kids out here. Again, they were, man, it must have been 15 years ago, and they, they were younger, 15, 17 years ago. And this whole 40 acres, the 10 acres that you entered over here on Norwood was set to be a Sherwood school. Can you believe that? Somewhere back, Sherwood had that. Or their school district, the boundaries have shifted somewhat. But we bought 10 acres there that he had bought, and then we bought this acre. Then we bought another nine, so it ended up being like 53 acres that we had that we were that we were moving towards. And uh, so when we bought it, I, I brought my family. We walked across the field, and, and, and there was this green brush and berries and, and, and briars that were everywhere. You could barely walk through here. And uh, I remember stopping and saying, Let's pray that God would bless this place. And I got, you know, my little family, my wife Karen, we grabbed hands together in a circle. And some of them prayed. I prayed at the end, but while, while one of them was praying, I looked around, and this may seem corny to you, but man, the Lord really touched my, my heart with it. I looked around, and there were hundreds of thousands of daisies. And as one of my children was praying, I just felt this in my spirit. Wouldn't it be awesome? If each one of those daisies represented a soul that God had in mind to save because this place was right. Now. Hundreds of thousands say, well, that's ridiculous, really? So we've, we've run several hundred students through here already. And they're moving everywhere across the world to do the work of God. And people are coming to Jesus everywhere. And from this church and the ministries we have here, people are rising up to do things. And 
I'm not saying hundreds of thousands will be one here. I think tens of thousands can be one here. But I believe because of the influence that God would put in your heart and your life that someday hundreds of thousands of people can be saved because this place had a beginning that God wanted to have. God had some things in mind. He, he's not into building buildings. He's into getting a facility to facilitate people growing in Jesus Christ. And that's what this has been about. I remember walking across later as they plowed that field. By the way, there's $2 million worth of pipe below the ground that we were on that they made us put in along with eight retention ponds that we didn't really need. But in a way, they were trying to stop us. Because if they put all these things on us, there's eight buildings that's a $100 million build out that can rise up on this campus someday. It's going to be built out like a college campus through the years. And to stop us, the city doesn't want large churches or large Christian schools. I know that because I sat with them. The county didn't really want it. But God miraculously somehow brought it into existence anyway. And so, we, you know, with all the millions that we had to pay, 700000 out on the road when we were, you know, that we had to put in. So 2.7, that didn't include the land. That's just the underground and the excavation. So along the way, God just kept giving us the funds to go. I mean, that's crazy, ridiculous. Who can come up with that money? But God kept, kept, God kept doing it. And I remember walking across the field with my daughter here after it had been plowed and that stuff was under the ground and we, we, we got to the end and it was so dirty and dusty. My daughter Candace, who went to school here the first four years of the high school, um, our socks were so dirty, we decided to take them off on the other side of Norwood. We sat down on that walking path and we shook our socks out and just put them in our pockets. And my little girl said to me, and I'm, I'm telling you, <clears throat> you know, I may seem like you know, this man of faith and I knew it was gonna happen. If there's no reason to doubt, there's no reason to have faith, right? Because it's an impossibility unless God shows up. And I heard a story once about some building in Rio de Janeiro that was halfway built and never got built all the way. And its name in their native language became um, uh, uh, the, the place that will not happen. And they started to call it a monument to failure in Rio de Janeiro because some money was sank into it. So here we are, millions of dollars in. We don't have the permits. And, and, and even though I'm praying and believing, I don't know that it's going to happen for sure. I'm just believing God and, and hoping like, like you do for your dreams and the things the Lord's put in your heart. So I have my moments of doubt along the way. I remember for years I would walk in, walk across this path and just feel like, I feel that thought. The enemy speaks to us too. Did you know that? He can't make you, <clears throat> excuse me, take a thought, but he can put one in your head. Let me tell you, a thought of the enemy is always the enemy. Take your own life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's always the devil. It's not even you. You think it's your thought, <clears throat> but the enemy will just zing that through your mind because he wants to destroy you when God has a purpose for your life and something that he wants you to fulfill. And he sent the zinger through my mind, and the zinger is this is a monument to failure. It'll never get done. I heard that over and over as the enemy tried to discourage me. And there were people who tried to discourage me too along the way. Not just me, the elders, the church, all of us. We lost some people because we did this. They didn't understand it. But we felt we had to, to follow God. And so all that doubt that you had to wrestle through, and I'm sitting over there with my little girl, we're taking our socks off, and Candace says to me, Daddy, this is going to happen. I can see it. It's, all, it's like it's already done. The buildings, they're coming. And God, I mean, this is a little girl. And when she started saying that, something rose up in me. You know, every now and then, we just need something from the Lord. And I said to her, who told you that? She said, nobody, Daddy. I can just feel it. So through the years, there's that wrestle, wrestling, that tugging back and forth. But God kept that vision alive in our hearts. They told us, this may not, I hope this is interesting to you. Uh, because it's, it's, these things are miraculous. The permits were, were as miraculous as anything. Because they told us they, that, that means to get permission from the county or the city. They told us they wouldn't do it. They told us that, that uh, we shouldn't even try. But we kept moving. They would stop things or make us pay extra. Every time we'd either pay it or get it right back on their desk in two days. But one of the things they told us is, yeah, you can build a Christian school, but because you're out of the urban growth boundary, the urban growth boundary was on the other side of Norwood. That's where the city of Tualatin city limits started at one time. 
They said, we'll give you a permit, but 70% of your students will have to come from rural areas. That means outside city limits. And that's the only way we'll let you have a school. Well, that would kill the school, right? Because that means, you know, how many kids are country kids that live outside the city limits? You know, we, we may be able to pull a student body together of 30 or 40, right, in the long haul. But we couldn't get that hundreds that we believe the Lord is leading us to. But what we found out along the way is God even sent great Christian lawyers. We found out that if we got that permit and accepted it the way they wanted to give it, that once it came into the urban growth boundary, if we could get it there, that the permit automatically switched to a city permit, which would allow any students we wanted to come. What's so awesome about that is we knew something, we knew more than they knew, and they were the ones putting the permits together. We knew we weren't going to put a church here or a school unless we had a permit anyway, so we took it. I remember sitting there that day, they put all these restrictions on the permit, and they said, is this acceptable to you? And they expected to kill it right there, and I stood up and said, yes, sir, that's acceptable to us. And they kind of looked at each other, and they said, do you understand that, you know, 70% of your students are, I said, yeah, we we understand we're, we're willing to accept those terms. But we knew we had our back pocket because God had shown us that once it got into the city, it would flip to where anybody who wanted to come could come here. So we said, yes, now we have the pressure to bring it in. For two years, we tried several ways to bring it into the urban growth boundary, and we couldn't do it. It was so discouraging to me. We tried one way, we thought we had it, it would fall through. We tried another, and it'd be blocked. We had, I can't remember why, but we had a two-year window to do it. And in the last two weeks, I was ready to stand in front of the church and tell the church we weren't able to get the permit through the structure that happened, but we were going to keep praying. And I was kind of thinking my logic and praying and thinking what we would do. And one week before that expired and we lose our opportunity and have to re-up, we didn't know it, but check this out. Now listen closely. For 40 years, LUBA, the Land Use of Board Appeals, had been looking for acreage to bring into the urban growth boundary. We knew nothing about this. We never had a clue until the week before our, our window was closed. And it showed up in the paper a week before, and I got an email and a call. Someone told me, look in the paper. And I looked, and they surveyed 40,000 acres in Portland. started 40 years ago. And, you know, only the government can take 40 years to make a decision, right? But, <clears throat> but they, they decided to bring 400 acres out, out of the 40,000 that they surveyed, that they started for, they decided to bring 400 acres in, and our 40 acres was part of that 400 acres. That is an unbelievable miracle. I could not believe, I should have believed it. We were praying, we were going, we were trying. But here's what I want you to know, students. God brought the school into existence. God knew you'd be sitting here someday. God cares about you and loves you so much that he said, I know what I want to do and I know who I'm bringing. You get going and we're going to get it done. We built the path. I prayed here several hundred times as I, as I told you. And still, even when we had the permit, we didn't have money to move. One day, two developers came to me. They were Christian guys. God used people everywhere all over the place. One, at one time, they were, they were going to stop our permit. Uh, um, and they could do that with, with water rights and other things. But one of them said, these guys think they can build a church out here. I, I know because an employee heard them worked at this, this, uh, this government place. An employee that went to church here. She said, they said up front, they're never getting that permit. We're never giving them that. And so she had worked there for 30 years. She's since retired. Just the sweetest old lady you'd ever know. And they all loved her. And she went up to the desk and said, hey, that's my church. These are wonderful people. You need to help them. And they said, oh, we didn't know it was your church. Well, oh, okay, okay. And they put it through because of this old lady who was single and, and loved God. And, and they loved her. And we saw miracle after miracle. The two developers came to me and said, we have an idea to get you the money to build the first building. And you saw some of the buildings that are going to be here in that plan. And you thought, well, that's not what this looks like. Each curb, you, you, know, you see the angles of this curb? That's three buildings that we're hoping to get up in the next five years. And it's $12 million. And, and you say, $12 million. Well, that's how much was raised the first time. $12 million was eventually raised. And six of it was raised this way. These two developers said, we're going to, we're going to, Take some of your acres, because remember we had 53, 
Give us 17 of them. We can add 13 that we purchased out here and we'll sell it to a, to a large home building company. It was the second largest company in the United States. They've since gone out of business. It was many years ago. Uh, they were bankrupt. But they said, we, we think we'd get 400,000 an acre for it. And so they worked with this company and they said, look, we'll give you this land that they had for 200,000 an acre. But this stuff for the church, you have to buy for $400,000 an acre and it's non-negotiable. We make 50,000 an acre for it. We don't have the money to build this building. And, and so the developers went for it. And in one day we sold 17 acres for $400,000 an acre that we had purchased for 50,000. And then we purchased eight more immediately around us to square us up. So we bought those for 400,000, but the same day we bought these others for 200,000. And we ended up with more of a square configuration that would be better for a campus, 40 acres, and $6 million to put in our pocket. That's what built this building. And it was two developers. And so, so if you're going into business, don't doubt that God will use you incredibly for his purposes with your wisdom and your resources to reach and bless people, to feed the poor. Because those guys were huge. In the end, there was the equivalent of six $1 million donations that were given to see this rise up. Two and a half million raised by the church. The two developers would have had a million dollars profit in that deal and they gave it so that this could be built. And I, I just want you to know, man, that it hasn't been easy and these things just don't happen everywhere. That's how important you guys are. He knew you'd be here. We built this building. Uh, did, were we able to get the picture, guys? Yeah. Got it? So don't put it up yet. Don't put it up yet. So we come, you saw the walls going up in that picture there, you know, several years ago. I guess that was 10 and a half, 11 years ago. So we're watching the walls go up, and it's very emotional. I'm standing out here, parking lot's not in yet, so we're standing in dirt, the walls are going up. I'm thinking, Lord, you did it. And someone goes, look at that. I haven't seen it. Look up, and I look up, and somehow there's an H in the sky. Now, we weren't called Horizon Community Church, and Horizon Christian High School hadn't come into existence yet, but we had already named it. We're renaming the church and naming the high school just, just a few months before. As a matter of fact, we weren't Horizon Community Church till we hit this campus, and we changed our name the day that we, that we came onto this campus. But Horizon Christian High School, Horizon Community Church, and we look at this picture. Someone took a picture of it. Someone said, look up, and there was an H in the sky, if we could get it up here. Yeah, somehow, how do you, how do you get an, I mean, it, it just felt like, I, I know it's, you know, I don't want to be one of those rainbow flower guys, but I've already told the flower story, now I'm telling the cloud story, you know, but, but there was an H in, in the sky, and, and, and maybe it takes a little bit of imagination, but it, it, it blessed our hearts that day to say, how in the world, it felt like the Lord was just affirming that you're where I want you to be. You're doing what I've called you to do. I am with you. Ten years we've had since then. Students that were hiring back like Josh that are coming to this place. Students that are moving out. Now they're graduated from college and they're moving out into the realm of business and ministry and doing missions everywhere. It's incredible the way God has changed lives and is changing lives. A student about the fourth year walked across the stage and he said, Pastor Stan, on graduation day, all the robe and everything on. He hugged me because I used to help hand up the clothes. I don't do that anymore because we have great staff that are here and I need to be seen. Because um, they're the ones who, who helped you, brought you through. But he hugged me and he said, Pastor Stan, your school changes lives. It's a young man who came to Jesus here. There have been many people, listen, we're a school that believes in letting people in that don't know the Lord because we're going to talk about Jesus and the Word of God and God loves them so much and you can help them know about the love of God. And, and, and there have been scores of students, maybe, maybe over 100 that have come to Christ as they come to this high school. You have a chance to reach out to your friends here who don't know Jesus here. And that's the way life will be. It's a lot like that. You'll be working with people who don't know Jesus. And it's been amazing the way the Lord has saved lives and changed lives and is building young people. Recently, and I'm just about to close here, we, we had another gift. You know, for, so we had all these 
resources flowing for years. Here's the good news. $12 million was raised. Here's the bad news. It took 20. It took 20 million to get where we're at with the church, the school, and the move. So we financed $8 million. But God was in it, and, and God, God helped us, and God, we had resources and equity as such that we could do it. We've always paid the bills, and the Lord, the Lord has helped us. But for 10 years, we haven't had a large gift like we had way back there. And I'm thinking, hey, Lord, what happened? I thought we were going on with this, with this vision, and we we're going we we're gonna to go further. And just a few months ago, we had a $3 million pledge that was made. It's the largest pledge ever made. It's for the building that would be on the far side next to the football field. It, it includes a fine arts center and, and, and something for drama there and a, a, a commons area. And it also include, includes a gymnasium with at least two floors, maybe three. We'll see how it goes. So that's the good news, a $3 million pledge. And here, here's the reality is it takes $7 million to build it. So that was great to go, yeah! Million. Oh, shoot, we need four more, you know, just the next thought, right? But still, here's the deal. This is what God was showing me. We're on the move again. We're on the move. And you guys have helped bring it into existence because you're coming here and the strength of academics, the strength of athletics, the changed lives, we, we keep going as God builds us further. And I believe that it's possible that that could be built within two years. It won't start. Here's what I'd like you to do. Would you pray for us as Pastor Roger and I are going to start meeting with people. We're on that road again where we're praying and we're going to ask people to give towards so that we can raise up this other facility and see what God will do. There's a scripture, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 10. It says this, David, they, they just built a temple. Everybody, you say, there's no, there, there's no building campaign in the Bible. Yes, there is. There's more than one. God asked the people to build a temple in the Old Testament. He told David, have the people bring an offering. And they brought their offerings, but you know who led the way? Um, the leaders. David, the leaders of the people of Israel, they brought their gifts first, and the people rejoiced that their leaders gave. And then, then everyone else in Israel brought their gifts. And unbelievably, the price for the temple was totally covered when they took the offering that day, and they were able to build it with the overlaid gold and the altar and and the tabernacle and the temple, just like God had asked them to do. When it was all done and they collected the offerings, this is, this is what the Bible says. And I want to read it for us today. I want you to hear this and know that this is my heart for what God has done here in this place. First Chronicles 29.10 says, David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours Oh, Lord, is the greatness. I'm thinking of what's happened here. I'm praying this for us. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord. And we're amazed that everything that has happened has been done by you and has come from your hand. It's been incredible what the Lord's done through the years. And, and I, I, I want to ask this. I, I just want to speak to this for, for a moment. Do you have a dream? One of the things I want to do is encourage young people to dream big dreams. Have you got a dream that's so big that you're afraid to speak it because if you do, people will tell you that's dumb? I'll tell you what God wants. God wants athletes, artists, entertainers, businessmen, missionaries all over the world standing for him. And I want to encourage you, if there's a dream in your heart, and if, here's the deal. Sometimes, if it's a God dream, if you have a dream that you can do on your own, that's not really, it doesn't take any faith for that. But if you can dream a dream that's so big that, oh, that, that God needs to show up for it to happen, now we're talking. Now God can show himself. And I believe that he'll drop a dream in your heart. And I believe he has dropped a dream in your heart. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes this morning, if you would, please. If you just do that, just give a moment of privacy. Let me lift your hand if you have a dream that you believe that God has given you, that he's dropped in your heart, that's so big it would take him to do it. Just lift your hand if that's you, okay? Man, there's a, there's a number of students there. I, I'm gonna ask you, don't do it if, you're, if, if it's too embarrassing, but I'm gonna ask you to stand, because I love dreamers. I love dreamers that will believe God for a dream that's big. Would you stand if you lifted your hand? Just stand if you're comfortable with that. Now, everybody else, would you, 
Would you look up and, and maybe you want to stand too, but don't stand yet. If, if these, are, these are the dreamers, man. These are the ones that God puts something in their heart that's so big it can't happen unless he helps. The, these are the ones without, <clears throat> they have faith, they have to have faith to see it before it happens. We heard a story that was impossible. We heard the horizon miracle today. And I believe God has miracles for you guys and that's why he raised this place up. Now I'm gonna ask for you to just, just stand up and maybe you even wanna go to a friend, but I want us to just lay a hand on the shoulder of these people if we could. Would you just stand up and gather around these students? <clears throat> You want to go to a friend, feel free to just go over to where they're at right now. That's cool. Listen, dreamers, you do not have to tell anyone your dream because David to, or Joseph told his dream a little too fast, right? You don't have to tell your dream, but there'll come a time. You have to hold on to it. You have to nurture it. There'll come a time that you're going to have to believe and step forward. And we're going to pray for you. Now, pray for your friends as I pray. Father, thank you for what you've done in this place. Thank you. For the way that you raised up teachers and staff and the miracles that happened there. Thank you, Lord, for the hearts that have believed in a church that had the faith and would bring the resources. Thank you for the donors you brought. Thank you for the miracles. Now, Lord, we have more dreamers in front of us. Dreamers who want to do something for you, Lord. Whether it be business, entertainment, athletics, whatever the dream is, Lord, missions that you've given them. I pray that you put courage in their heart today to know. That if it's your seed that you've planted, that as long as they'll nurture it and water it and believe and walk with you and stay humble, you will bring it to pass. Lord, put faith in them today, a measure of faith. Put hope in them and let the dreamers, Lord, hang on to it and move forward with it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we do this before we close the chapel this morning? Can we, can we thank the Lord for what he's done here to bring this high school into existence and thank him for dreams? <laughs> Sit down for one second, please. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the, the old codger pastor today. I really appreciate that you gave me this opportunity. I do want some people to stand that I believe are uh, maybe the most incredible miracles we have. The staff here, our principal, the teachers and administrators, unbelievable people with amazing hearts. And I'm telling you, you, you have no idea how scary it is to try to bring a high school into existence when you don't know anything about it and you don't have that academia mindset. But God brought not only the financial resources, he brought the people. And I'd like for the teachers and staff to stand today, administrators, would you stand? And I want us all to give a hand to the Lord for them too. Would you do it? If you come on, back here. Wow. I, I like it that you love these people. So remember, God believes in you, this place would become into existence. You're here by the divine providence of God. He has a plan for your life. So look up and believe when he tells you to go, all right? Thank you for the time today. God bless. Scott? All right. Well, we'll let you guys go, but I